Thank you, Robin. Thank you for that beautiful ushering in of our Sunday celebration. You're welcome. So good morning, everyone. My name is Reverend Evelyn Bourne, and I will be your host and the practitioner of the day. So I'm pulling double duty. Um, before we dive in, I'd like for us to all... Um, no perfect health for Reverend Neil, who's not feeling great this morning. So I am filling in for him. So I ask for your patience and your grace while I move through wearing two hats. <laughs> and um, I'm grateful that Joe is there. <laughs> um, he remembered to turn on the, on the record this morning. So thank you, Joe. So welcome. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living North Jersey. Again, I will be your host and your practitioner of the day, Reverend Evelyn Bourne. I would like to thank Dave, who hosted our Science of Mind every day Sunday um, meeting this morning. I caught the, the closing prayer on that this morning, so it was a beautiful little gathering. And um, yeah, and, and also thank you to Reverend Joel, who's going to speak uh, in a little bit. So we... At the Center for Spiritual Living, we, North Jersey, we are an open and affirming science of mind community where the vibration of love lifts you, the wisdom of the ages inspires you, and the science of mind teaching empowers you. We believe that heaven and hell are states of consciousness that we experience in this lifetime, that you are the architect of your life, and it is never too late to know true happiness. Um, that that line of being the architect of your life is such an important thing to be conscious of. I mean, we say it, blah, blah, blah. We say it over and over. But if you really think about the fact that you are the architect of your life. So if things aren't going the way you want to go, you kind of kind of step back and go, oh, what was the plan? So anyway, good morning. Um, so now we're going to have an opening chant by Robin. And then I will pray us in. Spirit and I are one. Spirit and I are one. Spirit.
Yes, we are light. Yes, we are light. We are holy. I am holy. Each one of us is holy. Each one of us is an individualized expression of the one, the one power, the one presence, the one love, the one law, the one spirit, the one mind, but is everywhere evenly present. It is within each one of us. It is within me. It is expressing itself through and as me. It is creating me out of itself. It is creating each one of us here today under the sound of my voice out of itself. And so holiness is our birthright. No matter what we have done, no matter what we have experienced, holiness is our natural state. And so I am grateful this morning to be here in the Center for Spiritual Living, North Jersey, which is not a building. It is not a place. It is a vibration. And so I'm grateful to each and every one of you whose sort of combined energy creates this beautiful, sweet vibration that has sustained itself through the power of the one for these many, many years. And I'm grateful for the presence of the one that is with us right now, that never leaves us, that's closer than our next breath. So I include in the circle of this prayer, our spiritual director, Reverend Neil Pinkman, and I enfold him in this beautiful hovering of beautiful healing white light, knowing that he his health is restored and that he is feeling excellent. And I extend that same prayer to everyone here in this circle who may be having some kind of a, a health challenge to remind you that your perfect and divine health is your birthright. It is a perfect idea in the mind of God. And so what I know for each one of us is beautiful, perfect and divine health and vitality and strength and um, just the wherewithal to move through our days um, re knowing that we are we are the holiness of the one. We are the eyes and the ears and the hands and the feet and the mouth of the one in this earth. And um, so I'm just so grateful for this morning, grateful for this gathering, grateful to feel the presence of spirit already moving in and amongst us. And so it is with so much joy and gratitude and love that I release this, this word into the law. I allow it to be so. Please close with me by saying, and so it is. Oh, okay. 
All right, the affirmation. All right, let me get that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna paste the affirmation into the chat. July affirmation. This is where I am sending my love and appreciation to Reverend Neil, who typically does this <laughs> for me. So hang on a second. Okay, why is it not pasting? Okay, I don't know if you can hear me, but my Zoom is frozen. You can? Okay. Um, I, I, I'm not able to paste it into the chat. So I will read, um, if you can still hear me, I will read the July affirmation. I embrace the beauty of my divine imperfections. I continue my journey through a grand rising, and I bring my focus to my beliefs about perfection. I accept myself for who I am and who I am not. I embrace all parts of me, knowing that it is the varied aspects of me that makes my life vibrant and abundant. I honor the wholeness of my being and the multifaceted nature of the world around me. And so it is. Okay. Am I still with? Can you still hear? Yep. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do the peace practice. I can actually light a candle today because I'm in my own house. <laughs> right. So I'm lighting this candle, holding it up so you can see. Okay, so I am the peace that I wish to see. And you can repeat after me, you're, on, you're all on mute, so. I am the peace that I wish to see. I know this peace for my family. I know this peace for my community. And my community knows this peace for the world. Let's see, did we just lose her? I think we did. She might have turned herself off and then disconnected. Yes. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure, Robin, do you know if we had a song before the talk or not? You're on mute. I certainly feel one from what she was talking about, but we don't have a song. We don't. Okay. Well, then I, I'll just go into the talk and then uh, you take that feeling and uh, sum it up, sum it all up for us. All right. So you're going to go into the talk. Yeah, I'll just go ahead. Okay. This is called Summer Church. <laughs> we'll just go with it. Uh, okay. And, you know, just to have fun, I wasn't going to do uh, a joke, but I'll, I'll do one. I found one in my files. So uh, just to keep things light when we can. This is a joke um, called the genie. A husband and wife are both 63 years old, and they're coming up on their 40th wedding anniversary. Knowing that his wife loves antiques, he bought a beautiful old brass oil lamp for her. You know where this is going, right? When she unwrapped it, a genie appeared. He thanked them and gave each of them one wish. Well, the wife said, my wish is for an all expenses paid first class around the world cruise with my husband. 
As you wish, the genie said, and shazam! Instantly, she was presented with tickets for the entire journey, plus expensive side trips and dinners, shopping, spending money, and more. It's your turn, the genie said to the husband. What do you wish for? The husband was amazed at how the genie answered his wife's wish and sarcastically said, I wish I could go on this trip with a female companion who's 30 years younger than me. As you wish, the genie said, shazam, and instantly the man turned 93 years old. <laughs> I like the turning the tables on him. All right, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Uh, we're here to talk about, uh, the name of the talk is Practice Makes Imperfect. And I'd like to begin by retelling a story I first heard from the great author and poet Mark Nepo. And let me put Mark's name in the chat so that people don't think, what name did he say? And all right. So if you're interested, you can always follow up. I've heard him tell it and he's put it in books and, and all of that. And it's the story of a cyclist, a great cyclist, very dedicated to being the best cyclist in the world. That's a goal that the world can really get behind, being the best. This cyclist practiced for months for the big race. He practiced cycling in hills and valleys. He practiced on, in different altitudes with different equipment and gear, different climates. He practiced in different seasons. He consulted the best sports medicine team and built his muscles until his thighs were massive and powerful. He was fast and getting faster every day. On the day of the great race, he waited with the other cyclists and he felt that his life was waiting in the hills he was about to ride through. He couldn't quite say why, but he knew something important was about to happen. It was the thing he had trained for. Of course, he thought the important thing that was about to happen was winning the race, and he let that inner feeling go. Suddenly, he was in that moment just before the start, and he took a deep breath, and then the gun went off, and he could hear the and feel the rush of all the racers around him. They were off like a pack of young horses running. He was in the race, this race he had trained for for months, up a sloping hill and then down into a valley and then leaning into the next curve. It almost felt like he was flying and he loved that feeling. And then up the second hill and now the pack of cyclists begin to thin out. The leaders in the race were beginning to pull away and he was near the front. They were slipping through the land like arcs of light riding through the veins of the world. And then he was in the lead. He swept toward the wetland before him and he was gaining time. He even increased his lead. And then, then just in front of him, he saw a huge, beautiful bird about to take off. It was a gorgeous blue heron. If you've seen pictures, they're massive in size. And the cyclist saw the heron and hit the brakes. And the blue heron opened its massive wings, flapped a bit, and then took off in flight right before him. Its wings opening just in front of the cyclist handlebar. And if you've seen a picture of a blue heron, you know it's great size. And as it took off in flight, just before the cyclist, its shadow covered the cyclist as it took flight. And in that moment, something seemed to open inside the cyclist, that thing he had been chasing. The other cyclists were now getting close and began to pass him, but he just stayed there, stopped, and stood there straddling his bike staring at what the great blue had opened by cutting through the sky in front of him. In years after that race, others would ask the cyclists in disbelief, what happened? 
you were in the lead. Why did you lose that race? And he usually didn't bother to answer the question, how could they understand? But once in a while, when someone asked him just at the right moment, with just the right type of interest, he would look off into the distance, tasting that moment again and say, I didn't lose the race, I left it. That's such a great story. There's a formula that everyone has heard of and knows, and it goes something like this. Practice makes perfect. The more you practice, the better you'll be. But the word perfect is where we can get stuck. On one level, you know, we can use it colloquially, and it just means being better than before. But it's on another level that it can sometimes cause us pain and trauma that trauma of trying to be perfect or to achieve perfect things. Being perfect, we sometimes think, means being worthy or being good enough or being lovable. Uh, let me tell you a story about an acquaintance of mine, someone who had a large social media account. Nobody in this room, so I'm not going to reveal who they are. In fact, I'll just call them Z, the letter Z, to protect their identity. And Z, for several years, had built up a big social media platform. If you looked at Z's social media, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook, you would have thought that Z had the perfect life. After all, uh, Z had the perfect body. One of those people who would post, you know, like, I'm kayaking. Here I am hiking in the mountains. You know, and when they're at the gym, lifting weights, there's no sweat. You know, there's no sweat here or anything like that. But they're perfectly lifting, you know, so that's perfect. And of course, they have the perfect home. There's nothing, you know, out of place. And they'll be like, oh, my home's so messy, when really there's just like, two little things on the counter in this beautiful kitchen larger than my house. And they have, of course, the perfect dog. They always have the perfect dog, you know. There's no dog hair anywhere or dog drool or picking up dog dew anywhere, but it's the perfect dog. And they quote, they post the perfect little quotable quotes, you know, from the big TikTokers of the day, those wonderful little thoughts. And of course they have the perfect fiance who's also incredibly attractive and has also a huge social media platform and they have the perfect job i mean what is the perfect job but being a social media influencer and what does an influencer do an influencer influences what do they influence other people to be perfect on social media so that's you know all day long they just get to be perfect in their social media well, eventually, Z, you guys know those people I'm talking about, right? You come across them all the time in social media. This is one of them. Z eventually did get married, but of course, Z couldn't just get married. You know, like I would get married, you have a rehearsal dinner and then a ceremony the next day, done. No, no, no. Uh, Z had to have the perfect wedding to beat the other social media stars that had weddings. Z had to have one more of everything. So this was the perfect wedding. Wedding showers in three cities, uh, Los Angeles, New York, and Paris, of course. Wedding dinners at the fanciest restaurants. Um, and they didn't have just one wedding ceremony. They had two wedding ceremonies, of course. One ceremony was at an exclusive ranch here in the United States, performed by a famous spiritual guru who also had a ton of social media followers. And the other ceremony, of course, in the most beautiful villa in the Tuscany region of Italy. What could be more perfect than that? The whole wedding, um, it really was like a wedding month, had been posted on their social media. Of course, it had been sponsored by nationally known brands. And it had received a record number of likes for both of these people, Z and their spouse, on their many posts about it. It was all perfect. But... Z had a problem. On the last night, 
after the biggest main ceremony in Tuscany, when Z went back to the hotel suite, the lights went off, the filters went off. Z had a moment of panic. How could Z have a moment of panic when everything was perfect? Just look at their social media. But it was a moment of panic when Z realized that they had just married the wrong person. Well, to make a long story shorter, let me sum up what happened next very quickly. When that realization hit, it was like one card had been pulled and the entire house of cards began to crumble and fall. Suddenly nothing made sense. Uh, it, it became a very difficult time. And to their credit, Z listened to this panic and they took a break from social media. They, meet, they meant to just take a few weeks off to kind of get their head back in the game, you know, and, and get back to perfectness. But um, Z decided to go see a therapist and then went into therapy and realized, had one of those great realizations that this drive for the perfect life projected out on every screen around them stemmed from their childhood. Of course it did. You knew that's where this story was going. Of course it did. It's when Z had experienced trauma and rejection in their childhood, which caused Z to feel unworthy and unlovable. And Z had made an unconscious decision in their childhood to appear as perfect as possible so that they could finally be worth loving. And social media was built for that. You know, it was perfect for it. So therapy really helped immensely, but then Z discovered the spiritual path and learned about spiritual practice, true spiritual practice, not those shiny moments of meditation when they would sit in the perfect pose, you know, with the sunlight coming in. And then as soon as the click happened, then they would turn it off and move on with their day, but real spiritual practice. And Z dove into it. Because suddenly Z was finding something that was finally filling that hole within. Z divorced the spouse, sold their home, moved into an apartment, went back to school in a career in medicine, actually, which was where they had kind of started out in the beginning um, and then got waylaid by social media. Um, and it felt like returning to their true self and, and also a way of serving others. And then Z did end up getting remarried, but in a small ceremony uh, to someone who didn't even have a social media account. Eventually, Z did go back on social media, um, but by then they had lost a lot of their followers who, as it turns out, had only been there for the shiny, pretty person that Z had projected themselves to be, of course. But Z's social media was now based in their true self, although I will say that they still do use good lighting and filters, but uh, they use now their social media to record the real journey, and the real journey is what's breathtaking. So the formula goes, practice makes perfect, but we have it wrong. We're focusing on the wrong word there. We focus on the word perfect when the action word in that formula is practice. And on the spiritual path, we use the word practice very specifically. We use it as a way of turning our attention away from the ego or the effects of the world back to the soul. We use practice as a way of, of going from the rewards of the world to the rewards of the spirit. And when we do that, the formula changes from practice makes perfect, that's the worldly version of the formula, to the spiritual version of the formula, which is practice makes authentic. To Z, that meant giving up the facade of perfection to find the love they had always looked for, not the love of someone else or from thousands of social media followers, but that they had for themselves. This is not to say we shouldn't strive for things or train or challenge ourselves. It means that we don't do those things to fill a hole of unworthiness or not good enoughness. 
And how do we know the difference between striving for something that's ego-based or striving for something that's soul-based? Here's one quick way. It's when we're attached to the outcome rather than the process. When we are attached to the way it's supposed to end up rather than who we are in the moment as it's growing us, that's when we know. When we are inwardly directed, we move toward what inspires us and what grows us and what enlarges us. Like that great blue heron that the cyclist saw, we spread our giant wings and we take flight. And in taking flight, that's when we inspire others, not the other way around. We ground ourselves not in a fake positivity that bypasses our feelings and intuition, or not in projecting anything out in the world, we grant ourselves in our humanness. And the strangest thing happens when we do that. The thing we think is the least likely thing is when we ground ourselves in who we really are in our humanness, we discover we're lovable. How crazy is that? I wanted to read... This is from uh, the Artist Way group. Our Artist Way group just finished this up a few weeks ago. Uh, a book called Walking in This World by Julia Cameron. And Julia puts it this way. She says, at the root of most insecurity is the conviction that we must be somehow better than we are or other than who we are in order just to be acceptable. Oh my gosh, I can still get chills from that. I lived that. That's the first you know, 30 years of my life. Lost in all of this improvement and striving for perfection is the idea that there is a great deal to like about, to like about ourselves exactly the way we already and truly are. So often we are focused on what we would like to change and change for the better that we fail to celebrate what is wonderfully enjoyable exactly the way it is, even if it's not perfect. We are often far closer to our own ideal and ideals than we dare recognize. Self-esteem is an active choice. We can choose to actively esteem our many positive traits. By counting our blessings, we can come to see that we are blessed and that we need not compare ourselves to anyone. She also has a, a practice to do with that, which is to take a pen in hand. I'm not gonna make you do this right now, but you can do it later. Number from one to 50 and list 50 specific and positive things you like and approve about yourself exactly the way you already are. It's a really powerful exercise to do. Um, I know that for myself, I tried to be perfect, but I didn't even, to be honest, I didn't even call it perfect. I just tried to be the good boy so that others found me acceptable. And I think that's what Z was trying to do too, was to be the good one, you know, the good, to be so good that others, it was undeniable that others would love that person because they were so, being so good in their life. But it wasn't until I decided that I was okay as is and didn't seek the approval of others, didn't try to make everyone happy, and didn't try to make people like me, didn't say yes to everything that I thought I should do. It wasn't until all of that that I began to actually feel grounded and real, and boy, it was that hard, because when you are a people pleaser, and I bet there are some other people pleasers in this room, when you are a people pleaser, it is really hard to turn away from doing that. But I went from trying to be the good boy to being an authentic person, and that's what changed everything. I probably, I don't know if you've noticed this, but ministers often return to the same material over and over again, not because we are not open to other material, but because we return to those things that have had the greatest impact on us. So I have no doubt read you this quote 600 times before, but it is worth bearing, repeating, all right? Because it's something that has really made a difference and, and is apropos to what we're talking about. This is from Carolyn Mace in her book, uh, Soul Contracts. She said, and I wrote it out 
big, so I can always remember it. She says, when you do not seek or need external approval, you are at your most powerful. Nobody can disempower or, uh, I'm sorry, nobody can disempower you emotionally or psychologically. You cannot live for prolonged periods of time within the polarity of being true to yourself and needing the approval of others. At some point, you will realize that you are doing harm to yourself by being what you think you should be so that someone approves of you. Compromising who you are to gain the approval of another is a very precise example of giving away a piece of your spirit. So you remember the cyclist? To the world he had lost, but in his heart, he knew he had won something more important than the prize, that gold cup. All of that practice, those months and years of practice had prepared him for the moment of true flight. Not prizes or being better than others, but the ability to be in the moment and to see through the noise to the perfection in front of him. He won the race, but not by going to the finish line faster than the others. He won it by following where it led him, and it altered the rest of his life. We use the word practice as a way of creating spiritual strength, which is like going to a gym each day to build muscle. Daily practice allows us to build spiritual muscle. And you might have heard the phrase muscle memory. We build spiritual muscle memory through our practice of drawing from the divine compass within. And when we need it the most, the practice is there. And the muscle memory we built up is there to get us through the situations. When we have that spiritual strength, we can use it when the best happens, like when the cyclist was winning the race, or when the worst happens, like when Z's house of cards tumbled. And Truthfully, on the spiritual path, we can use that spiritual practice to see that those two things, the best thing and the worst thing, are the same thing. They are just experiences that happen, and then we draw on our spiritual path within, that spiritual muscle memory within, to be able to see it through the lens of the divine rather than the lens of being a victim or being less than or drawing again on our wounds. This is why we practice spiritually. Practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes authentic. We can draw on that inner source of strength in all situations because we've practiced for a time such as this, whatever time it is. We've become grounded in authenticity because we are rooted in the great I am, all capital letters, I am. So in closing, let me say the wise teacher, Jesus, remember him? Uh, he once commanded of us to love others as we love ourselves. Famous saying, what does that really mean? Our spiritual practice, whatever that is for you, doesn't make perfection. It makes authenticity. Perfection isn't our goal. Loving what is, is the goal. And when we accept ourselves as is, imperfect in our humanness, then paradoxically, something amazing happens. We love ourselves. And then... We can extend that love of ourselves as is to others, as they are. That is the spiritual path. Letting go of the ego, embracing the I am within, that is when we take flight. There are many forms of spiritual practice, and one of them is called spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. Let's do that together right now so that we can take flight with this truth, this realization. And right now we just go within to immediately connect with that great blue heron inside of us, that great beautiful spirit that spreads its wings and takes flight. That is life with a capital L. That is 
the divine in us, as us, that we can connect to as easily as taking one breath deeper. So we do that now. We connect to the eternal within, the greatness within, the unlimited within. By doing that, we turn ourselves away from the way the world would have us be. And instead, we turn on the soul compass within us and walk toward the path our soul gently leads us to walk. When we do that, whether the others understand, approve, or even notice doesn't matter because we are right where we may, are meant to be. We are now on the right path because we are on the path of our soul. We turn away from the conditions of life, the effects of life, and we go right to the source, which is always within, always available, and always exactly what we need right here. So doing that right now, we just declare for ourselves, each one of us listening to this, week, this these words, declare for ourselves that we now follow our soul's compass so that we might take flight, not just once, not just occasionally, but every day, whatever that means for us right here and now. We release this into love and law, knowing it is ours in this moment, now and forever. And together we say, and so it is. You may wonder what your world is coming to with all the ups and downs that you've been through. But there's more than the eye can see There's a truth in your divinity So be still and know all is well All is well, all is well Be still and know all is well All is well, all is well Clouds roll in, don't you worry none. Before you know it, you'll be up with the sun. And on and on, this world goes round and round. But in the chaos, there's something to be found. So be still and know all is well. All is well.
You're muted. Are you not able to unmute? You're muted. <laughs> You're right. Frozen. Oh. Okay. Well, we can't get our uh, announcements then. Which is probably, I don't know if anybody else has those available, but uh, I don't. I don't have them handy, but I can say, uh, I'll just sum up by saying, um, if you go to the website and click on events, you can see all the upcoming things that we have. You can also sign up for alerts, which is wonderful to do so that you get the emails. And um, I think that's what we can say with announcements. Uh, this is holiday weekend service so we'll just let it be that and then um let's move into our giving i don't have anything to add to that either everybody has that in their emails and every week it's the same thing right exactly so do we have what to do. coming up on the 20th go ahead what's coming up we have a picnic coming up on the 20th um, in the afternoon. It's in the email. So, yeah, check it out and go. Uh, yeah, I think that was August, August 10th. 10th. August oh, 10th. August 10th. Okay. August 10th from 2 to 7. Uh, you can register online for the New Thought Food and Fun Gathering, uh, which will be at Unity of Sus Sussex County. And then in September is the Joseph Campbell and the Power of Myth. Um, there's a, oh, there's a special concert this afternoon, um, July 7th, 3.30 to 5.30, that includes um, Ray Atkins and our beloved Ty Stevens, oh. and I don't know if that's online as well, but you can uh, go to the website and see uh, more information about that. There's the women's uh, monthly women's gathering. She speaks. Is everybody able to hear him? Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's that. Anybody else have any other announcements? We're going to start up the Artist Way group uh, in a few weeks, so I'll announce that soon. All right. Well, then let's. Um, Let's move to Conscious Giving. She Speaks is closed for the summer, so it starts back up in September, I think it, I read. All right, I don't have the giving affirmation. I don't have it either. If anybody remembers it, fine. If not, we should have it, of course, memorized. <laughs> So what we'll do is we'll just know, uh, first of all, uh, if, for those of you who are on automatic giving, that's great. And if for those of you who want to give, there are multiple ways that you can you can give. If you go to the website, cslnj.org, um, there are ways on there that uh, can help you um, to give, like, um, which you can do right on the website, in fact. So let's... Yeah. Okay. Hey, hello. I ha I have the giving affirmation. This isn't even if you. I have the giving affirmation. If you want me to read it. Oh, great. So let's know right now um, the giving that we that we give both now and moving forward. And Anita, if you would read the giving affirmation for us as we know it for each one of ourselves. I bless this gift that I give today. I give this gift from my heart, and I give it mindfully. May my gift go further to heal prosper, and bless this center and all who enter. I accept all good that comes as a result of this flow, knowing that it returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. 
and so, so it fun is. It is. And now, uh, Robin, I believe you have another song before we uh, before we sum up. So right. back to you, Robin. All right, and everybody have a joyous Sunday. This was wonderful. Thank you for having me. Everybody, get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Whoa, everybody, get up on your feet. See the light in everybody you meet. Let us be reminded of who we come to be. We are love, we are one. One big family. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so much Robin you're welcome amazing that was uh fantastic and uh, all that you did today was fantastic thank you so much and thank you for everybody and you know my talk today was about <laughs> per, uh, authenticity not perfection and this ended up being uh, a very authentic but not perfect um <laughs> Sunday experience but I'll take authentic over perfect any day um so uh, I just want to send us all off on a wonderful, authentic uh, day and week, and um, I will see you, we'll all see you next Sunday. Thank you, everybody.